All right, if I was to ask you, what is the hardest thing about health and fitness in general? What's the hardest thing to do? What's the hardest thing about it? Every, like you, Mac, and everybody home, at home listening along, what would your answer be? 100% consistency. Mm. Being consistent. Day uh, in, day out. Consistency is the hardest thing. And I wanted to bring this up because we actually got to meet one of my online clients in person. We've been traveling. As we said in the last episode, we're moving from Ulladulla to Melbourne on, on that travel. We got to meet one of our clients, which was pretty cool. It was. Um, so it was great meeting her, and she just brought up a topic that I thought, it's it's one thing that everybody struggles with, and it is the hardest thing that ever, th- with health and fitness. Yeah. And it is consistency, like you said. So um, just quick little stats there for you, just to break it down even more. Uh, so these, this isn't exact stats, but I'm just going to make it a little bit easier just to understand. But if 100 people sign up to a fitness challenge mm-hmm. and it lasted six weeks, by the end, 40 people are going to be left. So that's 60% drop-off rate. Yep. In one year, there's only going to be 20 people left exercising out of that 100. Wow. So 80% success rate over 12 months. So consistency obviously is harder, and then it gets even worse for diets. I think it was like four people out of the hundred. Stick to a diet. Stick to a diet. Yeah, that's why I hate like the label diet. Yeah, same. And I did want to bring that up as well. Let's start with that. Let's okay. Diets. Diets. They're just like the word diet literally means your way of eating, right? Mm. So it can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be like paleo or vegan or whatever else there is, it just means the way that you choose to eat. Mm. You know what I mean? So I I don't know. I think the reason that people can't stick to a diet is because they adopt somebody else's way of eating and it's foreign and it's uncomfortable and it's hard and it, it doesn't feel right because it's not theirs. Like our way of eating healthy might be very different to the next person's way of eating healthy, which took me also a very long time to learn with clients. Mm. Like in the very beginning, I would sort of encourage clients to just eat a diet similar to ours, where now I know that that's it's not suitable for everybody. And there's millions of different diets, quote unquote diets, that someone can have. Like it just depends on like schedule, food preferences, timing, availability like so many things and I think that if everyone just dropped the idea that diet has to be a certain set menu that has a label there would be so much more adherence because it's a lot easier and it's more sustainable and more enjoyable actually yeah it just sucks because the fitness industry sort of took diets fad diets I'm going to call them and realized they could make a shitload of money out of them so that's how they got so popular, like like you said, paleo, carnivore, all like every single diet that you can think of got popularized because somebody could make money off it. Yeah. And and look, some yes, these diets, all these diets work, but not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's what Mac is saying. Like everybody is so different. But if you try and force yourself into one of these molds and do something that you is hard and you can't be consistent at, then of course you're going to fail. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so with exercise, and it's like fad diets are the same as exercise routines. Like how many fad exercise routines come and go? True, yeah. Like there's so many. Some are still around, obviously. Um, but if you're trying to fit the mold of, like if you want to look like the world's top level athlete in whatever sport... And you're like, well, I'm going to do that sport to look like that person. It's not how it works. And a lot of people get caught up in that. And again, a lot of people have made money off that. People look a certain way and they're like, well, do this workout routine and you'll look the way I do. And it doesn't work like that. Mm. Everybody's different. Everybody likes different exercises. Everybody has different bodies. So you have to work around injuries, movement patterns, how your body is made up and all that sort of stuff. And again, if you force yourself into these certain molds, of course you're not going to be consistent. Yeah. Um, 
So let's talk about like what consistency is because like what do you, what do you consider consistent consistency? I would consider consistent consistently something that you do on a regular basis. Mm. So not necessarily daily, it could be a certain amount of times a week but for a long period of time. So it's it's like a part of your life, it's a part of your daily routine. You probably don't have to think about doing it as much because you do it so consistently consistently it's just there so for us or for me I think when I feel like I failed at being consistent is when I've skipped probably two plus days of doing something so in my mind it's without doing something without skipping more than two days I would consider being consistent mm. yeah Again, different for everybody yeah, like all of the things we've just spoken about exactly and I was just about to bring that up like yeah, for us to skipping two days, like having two days off the gym or something like that, it feels like we're not being consistent anymore. But somebody just starting out once a week, and this is where consistency sort of breaks down because it's boring. Mm-hmm. And it can get very boring because if I say to you, go and work out once a week, you're going to be like, well, I'm not going to get results. But if you do that over 12 months, you're doing a lot of workouts. Yeah. Yeah. Compared is, to doing none. Yeah, compared to doing, like, what, 52 weeks in a year. So 52 workouts over the year where if you just go and smash yourself for one week and do five workouts in one week and then stop mm. for the next... 12 months, 11 months. couple of months, yeah. You, it's not very consistent and you're not getting many workouts. So you're better off doing one a week and doing the 52 in a year mm. because then over five years, that's going to be adding up as well. And over 10 years, that's adding up. So you can see sometimes when it does feel boring and it can't diet as well. Like you might think, oh, just one healthy meal a day isn't going to get you anywhere. But over the week, over the month, over the years, it will get you somewhere. And I think that's what a lot of people get mixed up of. <clears throat> you need to be super consistent doing things every single day to get results where you don't need that. No, and sometimes when you try to add a million things in to one day, like when you're a beginner and you're trying to drink two liters of water, eat three healthy meals, go to the gym for an hour, walk for 20 minutes, sleep for eight hours, it's super hard to be consistent in any one area. Mm. So it's much, it's, much, like, it's much more likely that you're going to succeed if you just pick one thing to be consistent with and to do that one thing until it's boring. And once it's boring... Or you don't have to think about it. You know that the, like you're easily going to stay consistent with it for a longer period of time. Yeah. I also think a lot, the reason a lot of people fail at being consistent is because they rely on motivation to like get them to the gym or yeah. to enable them to cook healthy meals or go for a walk in the morning or whatever it is. But we've spoken about many times before that motivation is unreliable because it's just an emotion. It's Mm. just like being happy or sad or excited. It goes away and it comes like sometimes it comes and it's super strong and you're like, yeah, this is great. I'm motivated. This is my time to start. Like this is my sign or this is the right day or the right month or whatever it is. And then you might have a crap night's sleep and you wake up in the morning and your motivation is completely gone. So then you lose your consistency because you were relying so heavily on being motivated. Mm. Like when we were speaking to our client that we met on the way down to Victoria, one thing that she said that stood out to both of us was people see her and comment on how great her physique is looking. And they they say, oh, I wish that I could have the motivation or the discipline to exercise like you do. And she said, you like, you don't understand how hard it is, Mm. like how much effort I have to put into it. And that's another thing. People think that like exercising is always going to feel easy, like to fit and healthy people. People look at us and think that, are we exercising every day or eating healthy every day is super easy for us. But th- it's not. <laughs> it's it, definitely not. And this is sort of like you break it down even more. The workout itself is like once you get to the gym and you start working out, that's easy. It's actually getting the motivation or being consistent enough to get to the gym. Getting to the gym is the hardest part. Yeah. 
or food prepping or making sure you buy, buy the right foods and not having the shit foods in your house, eating healthy meals, like that is the hard part, getting... Bef- like Before you actually do the act. Eating the healthy meal is easy. Yeah. I love eating. It's <laughs> making it and making sure I've got the ingredients to make those healthy meals is the hardest part. Yeah. And um, like, Le- like Leanne... Sorry, I'm using your name, Leanne, but um, Leanne said it's fucking hard. And these, and this lady that said that to her, like, I wish I had your body, doesn't realise how hard it is. But it's being consistent is the hardest thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I figured we could just end this bit with how to actually be consistent without motivation. Because I think that is the biggest key. So being consistent and not relying on motivation. So do you want to go first? Sure. I don't even know where to start. I think for me, what works the best is just having a solid routine. Mm. So don't even think about motivation or think about going for the to the gym for a second. Just think about how your day is going to play out and plan where you're going to go to the gym. Doesn't matter how you feel about going to the gym. Just plan. Like lock in. I'm going to the gym at 8.30 a.m. And lock it in like it's a meeting or something that you can't change. And it's so much easier to stick to that consistently because it's locked in. It's on your calendar. You might have your exercise gear and everything out already. You don't have to worry about being motivated. You're just going to go. And I also think, like you said, the hardest part is getting to the gym. I also think, like for us, driving to a physical gym is a lot easier for me to work out than, say, working out at home. Working out at home seems very trendy at the minute, but I think that that also adds to the consistency statistics because you don't have many people around you and it's as much less resist, like there's much less distance between you deciding to work out and going into your shed to work out, say. Whereas if you're like, okay, I'm just going to drive into town now and you just drive to the gym and you're already there and you're like, okay, might as well work out. Whereas when it was, when we were training in our shed, I was like, oh man, it's just out there, you know, like it's so, it's so easy and convenient, but that almost makes it harder to stick to because you can change it so easily. So back to my original point, just like lock it in. Mm. Don't make it, it's not negotiable. This is when I do it. That's just how it is. Yeah, definitely. And that, I was going to say that ex- that as well, but just make it as easy as possible. So mm. have a routine of like, literally I wake up at six, six o'clock, I have my glass of water, I have a shower. By 6.30, I'm out the door for a walk. Yeah. If the walk's the easiest possible thing that you can do to add into the routine, again, even if it's every second day or you're just starting to walk once a day, like set your routine for a Monday. My Monday routine is I wake up at 6. By 6.30, I'm out the door for my walk. Yeah. Every other day, whatever, but Mondays, that's where it starts. And then you can build on that. Like, like I said, don't make it too hard. People, too many people make it too hard and too complicated and I'm going to have my smoothie. I've got to have all the ingredients there. Then I go for my walk. Then I come back. I'd stretch. And it's all these things added up into this one routine. And I'm even stressing out trying to think about <laughs> trying to get that done. So make it as simple as possible so you don't have to rely on routines. Yeah. Uh, and sorry. On motivation. Motivation. And one more thing to, I think almost give yourself a false sense of motivation is keep track like a habit tracker Mm. is so like habits are very overrated but i think a habit tracker at the minute is very underrated like physically seeing the amount of days that you go to the gym can either give you motivation to keep going because you've been going for three weeks now why would you stop or it can give you motivation to get back into it because you haven't crossed off on your habit tracker that you've been to the gym for the last 12 days. And you're like, oh man, Mm. what am I doing? And it's sometimes just seeing it visually makes, just gives you that like aha moment almost. And it gives you a little bit of accountability. Like if you don't have someone to be there that is keeping you accountable, just writing it down. And then you can physically see how much effort you're actually putting in. Yeah, well... You can't improve what you don't track. Yeah. So by tracking your habits and you're tracking your motivation as well, you can improve on it. Yeah. So make sure you track it. Yeah.